Verse 17 says, iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Iron sharpens iron. So I need some iron to rub up against in order to be sharpened. You don't sharpen iron with butter. You, you, don't, you don't sharpen iron with dirt. You, you, you know, I need something else um, that's the same to rub up against in order to be sharpened. Um, I, uh, I want to show you a picture, um, and I want you to tell me um, who this is. Can y'all recognize who, who, is, who is that? Somebody said Tony Stark. Um, and then, so, so this is Tony Stark, and this is his suit. He's Tony Stark, but then when he puts on the suit, he's Iron Man. And so, so I want y'all to go, leave that up there. I want y'all to go to Ephesians chapter number six. Turn there real quick. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, when you get there, uh, say amen. Ephesians chapter number 6. Verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, I forgot that uh, Friday. But against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand or withstand rather in the evil day and having done all to stand. Uh, before I even get into the message, we don't need naked men running around our country. We, we don't need naked men running around the church. We don't need naked, when we see naked folks in public is something wrong. Say, say, say problem. And, and so, <laughs> so stand, therefore, verse 14, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, verse 16, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Praying always with all prayer, supplication in the spirit and watching where all, with all perseverance and supplications for what? All saints. Now let's go back to this. So Iron Man and Tony Stark are the same people. He just becomes more powerful same man but he becomes more powerful when he put on them. He can't fly without the suit on. Same man walking, but he can't fly. But once he put the suit on, he becomes more powerful. And so we're going to talk about today, the subject is, Iron Man. 
Now, now, uh, what I love about this is when I look out in the congregation, I see men. And boy, I'm excited to see the brothers. Come on, brothers, can we say amen? Can we give God some praise? I hear bass. I hear some bass, baritone, in the congregation today. And all of y'all got clothes on. Say praise the Lord. Amen. And, and so, so you didn't get, you didn't come here undressed. You had to put on something. And you put on something uh, because for many, many reasons, but for, for, for the main reason, clothes, clothes are protection. Amen. I mean, we, we need clothes to survive. The elements can sometimes uh, destroy the body if it's not properly clothed. And so God made Adam and Eve, he gave them what? Clothes. Y'all got leaves. The leaves ain't going ain't gonna, ain't gonna to work. You need some clothes. And, and so now Iron Man, going back to Tony Stark, um, once he puts his stuff on, now he's very, very powerful. Now, here's what I want to say today before we get into the message. I almost forgot to give this disclaimer. Um, I, I use everything. I see, really, I see everything as being a sermon. Amen. And I didn't do that until I started pastoring. Right. Right. And so now, you know, I can see, I can see a, a rose bush and I can see a sermon. I, I, you know, it's a sermon. I get a sermon. I got a bird feeder at home. There's a sermon out of there. Birds don't show up if it ain't no food in there. They fly right on by the feeder and go to the one that's got food in it. So a church going to stay empty if you don't have food in it. None of us had a reason to stop at 2043 West Walnut Hill before some food was in here. And then once food was in here, uh, it changed our direction. We, now we pull it in the parking lot. Some of us walking a long way to get to church. Come on, somebody, drive along. And, and so, so it's easy for me to see sermons. So I just want you to understand, I'm, I'm just not talking about movies. There's a sermon, in, and when I, when I watch a movie, and see, I see the Word of God in action. And so there's a scene in Star Wars. And, and everybody, especially me, and say amen. You got to add, listen, you got to get this one because if you don't get this one, you're going to miss the whole message today. I, I labored a long time before the Lord to get this thing right. My wife will tell you, and it came together, and I was like, okay, this is going to be good. But then God says, I want you to tell the men this. There's a scene in Star Wars where Luke was being mentored and trained by Yoda, the Jedi Master. And he had the power uh, inside of him, Luke did, um, to raise the ship up out of the swamp. But he didn't know it. And so Yoda told him, raise the ship up out of the swamp by using the force. And he went out there and first he said, I'll try. And Yoda said, no, 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 no. You either do or you do not. There is no try. Oh, y'all better get a revelation. God will never tell us to try. Not in the Bible anywhere. We either be or be not. We either do or we do not. There is no try. And so when Luke tried, he went and tried. And he tried to raise it up out of the swamp raise it up a little bit, and then when it got real hard, he let it down. And he went, sat down by a tree frustrated, and, you know, this is impossible. You act for the impossible. And, and Luke, and then the, the, uh, uh, Yoda went and, and, and pulled the ship up out of the swamp, raised it up in the air, floated around, and landed right beside Luke. And then Luke said to Yoda, I, I don't believe it. And Yoda said to him, that is why you failed. Yeah. All right. All right. Come on. Yeah. 
we got the same power. But the difference in the in, in the, be, the ship being in the swamp and it now being on dry land is I believe it and you don't. There's no difference in us as men. We're all men, but are you going to believe this today? And see, the men that leave out of here today believing this, your life will never, ever, 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 ever be the same. Amen. Amen. So I, I just, I'm praying, men, that you believe this today. Amen. And so, what's the title of today's message? Amen. Now, that's Tony Stark's suit. Right. And we know that's fiction, right? right. right? Yeah. That, there's no Iron Man, right? But uh, in there, there, this is, that's his armor. Right. <laughs> and then I want to show you ours. Because we do have, we got a suit. You can't see it, but the devil can. <laughs> you you may not see it, but 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 I guarantee you, demons see what you got on. And so so you you shouldn't have woke up this morning without getting dressed. And I'm not talking about this stuff right here. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about that spiritual armor because we in a battle. There's a real war going on, but we've been in war since we've been born. And the war, the, listen, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. He would not use the word warfare if we were not in a war. I mean, one of the worst things ever is somebody walking through a war zone and not even realizing they're in a war. But you have people that do it every day. And so, Iron Man, you an Iron Man, this, this is the weapons of your warfare. Not, not Tony Stark, but this is the weapon of your warfare. This is what we put on in Ephesians chapter number 6. Amen. And put that one up, please. Ephesians chapter 6. The, yeah, there we go. Leave that up just for, leave, leave that up for a minute. So what does he say? I want you to put on uh, the belt of truth. Brethren, that, that, that's where your reproductive organs are. It covers your loins. So, Papa can't be a rolling stone. You're going to be broke because she's coming for child support. And she ought not to have to come for it. But you can't keep sowing wild oats all over town. And be an Iron Man. There, there's, a, there's a breach in your armor. And say, I, I, uh, you, you know, I have to be able to control myself. Lord, Jesus, help me. Say men's day. Brothers that say, I couldn't help myself because she was so fine. If the scripture's true, the word of God says, and we know that it is, the word of God says he will not tempt us above what we're able to handle. So if she's out there, the one that's so fine that you can't handle, you won't ever see her. God will never let you see her. So that's a lie from the enemy. You could help yourself, you just didn't want to. And the proof of you not want to is you won't let your wife see your phone and the messages that are in your phone. Your phone is like Fort Knox. What you got in there that's so valuable? No, because I'm hiding something. And, and I'm trying to raise up iron men that's going to be powerful in the kingdom of God 
But we can't do that if we ain't putting our clothes on, if we ain't getting dressed, and if we're not dealing with stuff that we need to deal with. We don't like talking about sex in church. And let me just go on and say this. If, you, if you're married and you're not having sex, it's the same thing. Has the same result. God created sex in marriage. That's why you ain't having it. You couldn't keep your hands off of each other before you got married. Now you, can, you can't even touch each other. Now that you're married, you don't keep your hands on each other. Which one is it? Come on, somebody. Y'all help me out. breastplate of righteousness. And so now I've got righteousness covering my chest. Shoes of feet. Feet shot with the preparation of the gospel. Shield of faith. Okay. Heaven of salvation. Sword of the spirit. And then we talked about praying always what? In the, in the spirit. So, so when I put my suit on, I'm like Iron Man. What I couldn't do before, now I can do it. Come on now. And, and so, so now I become powerful. I become what God, or who, rather, God created me to be uh, in Genesis uh, chapter number one. Now, uh, here's a statement that I want to dwell on for the rest of the way. One of the biggest problems that men face is unhealthy relationships. Amen. Unhealthy relationships relationships. And so today I'm going to challenge you because I want to know who's in your circle. Come on, Pastor. Who, who do you have in your circle? And, and, and there's a mismanagement uh, at times uh, with a lot of men that I, that I know that, that you have your priorities out of order in terms of your relationships. And, and, and now I'm going to talk about your relationship with men. And I'm not talking about ungodly. I'm talking about, boy, it got real quiet. I'm, I'm, talk, <laughs> I, I'm talking about relationship in terms of friendship. Fellowship. Come on, somebody. Boy. <laughs> okay, boy, I got it's like Pastor. I don't know if I want to if I want to stay for this. One. <laughs> but one of the biggest problems that men face is is our relationship. Uh, my wife talked to me. She always sees the message before I, pre I preach it, and uh, she said, "You know, I got a really good uh, example for you." And of course, you know it was about me. And, um, but when I was, when I'm a very, we, we're both very loyal people. Like, when I'm your friend, I am your friend, and you don't have to worry about me looking for me, I'm, I'm there. You know, I ain't going to ever tell you I got your back, I'm going to show you. Show you that I have your back. And so, uh, one of my best friends growing up uh, betrayed me. And it hurt. I mean, it just, it hurt. It, it cut me so deep. I almost fought other guys who were telling me, he's doing these things behind your back. And I just knew that that couldn't be true, so I'm mad at them. About to fight them. And when I found out that it was true, I was devastated. Crushed. And so I built up a big giant wall in my heart. I ain't never going to let that happen to me again. So it affected my relationships because I wasn't going to let nobody else do that to me. I was never going to be that foolish and made to look like a fool. That's how I felt embarrassed and a fool. I was felt foolish that I fell for that. And so I put up this giant wall, and I lived a majority of my life uh, before I got delivered uh, that way. 
And so you were always a distance from me. I never let you in because you're never going to get that close to my heart to break it again. You with me? God couldn't use me until I tore that wall down. He said, if you build up a wall, I can't use you. Because there's going to be some people that I need you to minister to that you ain't going to minister to because you got this wall up. I would hide things behind this wall that I didn't want people to see, that I didn't want them to know. I, I wouldn't be vulnerable. I would just put on this facade that was not me. Are y'all with me? And God said, I need you to be real. I need you to be real. I need you to be transparent. I need you to tell people the truth. And you can't, you, I can't use you if that's how you're going to be. Come on now. God can't use a racist because he wants all races saved. If you only going to minister to your race, God can't use you. And so, so relationship issues, um, they, they are, they're, they're huge. Yeah. Yeah. And so now uh, with, with men, because, and the other thing, men, come on now, can we admit we're, we got a lot of pride? And, 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 and we really don't, we got a lot of fear, and we have a lot of pride. And we don't want nobody to know we're fearful. So it comes across as aggression. It's just like a dog in a corner. And he's really afraid, but he's barking like he's, you know, he's brave, but he's, the, the bark is really fear. And so men, our bark, the, the, the reason we're barking so loud is because we're so afraid. And then we're so prideful, we can't admit it. Now, y'all go back to, the, to, to Luke and, and Yoda. Don't say, and I, I see this in the spirit just as clear as I see that door back there. I don't believe that. That's why you fail. You're going to have to believe what the word of God says. And so what I want to do today uh, is talk about five relationships, say five, five. that every man must understand. There are five relationships that every man must understand. Now, one of the things that happens in church, uh, when we come to church and we talk about relationships, it's always we're preached to about our relationship with God, and rightly so. Praise God for that. But that's not the only relationship that matters. And so... Um, we neglect to talk about our relationship with other people. And that's so very, very important. And so the first one is a father relationship. I want you to go to 1 Kings chapter number 2. And Pastor Tony, don't you let me go over time today. Amen. 1 Kings uh, chapter number 2. Are we all right, church? Is this making sense? Say Iron Man. And see, come on, wives, don't we want an Iron Man? Yeah. You know, sometimes we want to be able to fly. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes we get tired of walking, we want to be able to fly. We want to, you know, come on now. And so 1 Kings chapter number 2, uh, when you get there, say amen. amen. And so the first relationship that we must understand is the father relationship. Uh, David had gotten old, and by, the Bible says in verse 1, uh, it, he had, uh, now the days of David drew uh, near that he should die. He charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. I want you to be strong and show yourself a man. He did not say, show yourself that you were born a male. See, being a male doesn't make you a man. That, that's, not, that's not what makes a man. He, if, he's talking to a male. So why did he have to say, I need you to show yourself 
a man. And there's a reason that I need you to show yourself a man. He says, and keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses, why? That you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn yourself. Look at verse 4. There's a reason that I need you to show that you are a man, not born a male. Church, I need us to get this. That the Lord may continue his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, if your children take heed to their way, walk before me in truth with all your heart, with all their soul, and shall not fail thee, there shall not uh, be a man, or, or a man shall not fail to be on the throne of Israel. Amen. Amen. David is saying God made some promises right, right. to me. Yeah. And I need you to man up. Right. So that you can prosper, so that you can be blessed, right. but also there are people coming behind us. It, it, this ain't this thing. It's, it's just not about me. It's also about who's coming behind you. Now, it's important to understand that this is coming from his father. And so there's a father relationship. And a, a, a father relationship, guys, even if you don't have a natural father, you need to have a father figure in your life. If you're going to be healthy, if you're going to be successful, if we're going to be iron men, then we have to have a father figure in our life that's going to encourage us. And a father figure doesn't have to be your natural daddy. Come on, somebody. But, 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 but we need to make sure that this is a relationship that's in our circle. Amen. 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 Um, in the father relationship, uh, this is somebody that has resources. Uh, this is somebody that has your passion. In other words, they are for you. They got your back. They also have gone further than you. Yeah. Right. And so they're in a place that you're not. Amen. It's amazing the people who want to meet with me that's been in ministry less than me but want to tell me everything about ministry. I know what it's like to bury people. I know what it's like to have children born and then they die and then we have to do the service. I know what it's like to go to a miscarriage. I know what it's like to sit at the bedside of somebody that's making the transition of going home and you're standing there with the family and, and you don't know what to say, but the Holy Spirit gives you the word to say at the right time. I know how to bury members of my own family that I grew up playing with. Are y'all listening to me? I know how to deal with a church fight. When folk leave and start talking about you behind your back and spreading in your windows and room. I know how to deal with insurrection. I know how to deal with strife and division. I've walked that walk. I've lived that life now. And so how you going to tell me when <laughs> I need to be telling you? So do I have a father relationship uh, in, in my circle? Um, they, <laughs> they are people that you can glean from. People you can glean from. I got three children, and all three of my children have graduated from college. All three of them. I can help you if you got children and you wondering how we're going to get them through college. We, we, we walk that walk. Y'all with me? And, and so who's in your circle? Who do you glean from? 
Who do you sit down? And I'm not talking about watch on TV. This ain't watching TV. This, this is a relationship that I can come and sit down with you. We can have coffee together. We can break bread together. You know me and I know you. Come on, somebody. And, and so, so we, we're not talking about these long distance uh, father-son relationships. We talking about somebody that we can talk to. I can get you on the phone. You got to go through your secretary. Men, I'm asking, do, do we, do, who do we have in, in our circle? Lord Jesus, where does my time go? Number two, the second relationship is friend. <laughs> David had a friend by the name of Jonathan. Jonathan was the, the son of, of Saul, the king. And Jonathan and, and, and uh, David, uh, they loved each other. And, and that's that philos. You, we get the uh, Philadelphia is known as the city of what? Brotherly. brotherly love. And so that's the brotherly love that they share. And so they were, they were friends. And so who, who are your friends? See, I can look at your friends and tell where you're going to end up. And I don't care how strong you are. If you're men, if you're running around with people that are cheating on their wives, if I want a cold, I'm going to get around somebody that's got one. Because I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch what you have. And so if, if, if I'm hanging around guys that's constantly cheating on their wives, it's just a matter of time. So, so the friend relationship, they share your passion. They, they are people who are doing life the same way. They may not be doing the same thing, but you have the same value system. Amen. And, and so we, 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 we value the same things. And so the friend relationship, uh, also, they're going to tell you the truth. They're, they're not going to just sugarcoat it. Uh, but but they're going to tell you the truth. And here's the other thing about this relationship. This is very important. You need it. Be, because... When they tell you the truth, they telling you the truth because they're your friend. Right. 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 That's right. Amen. Amen. So don't, don't kick your friend to the curb because they told you the truth. Right. The Bible says a friend loves at all times. And so I'm going to tell you the truth because I love you. Why are we unfriending them? The friend sees the lust problem. And the woman that's coming after you, she's not coming after you for who you are. She's coming after you for what, for, uh, for what you have. There's something that she can get from you. And the friend sees it, and the friend tells, it, tells you about it, and now you unfriend it. <laughs> yeah. Are we getting it? Yeah. And so who's in, your, who's in your circle? Because if I'm going to be an Iron Man, then I need these relationships. I need to understand these relationships. And so then the third one is follower. There's a follower relationship. And so God told us to be fruitful as men, right? To multiply as men. And then to do what? Leave a deposit. And so in 1 Timothy uh, chapter number 1, uh, Paul was a father to Timothy. Yes. And so, so Paul now has a son in the ministry. In other words, he, there's a mentor and a mentee relationship. And so, so who's in my circle? Come on, men. Y'all talk to me today that I'm pouring into. Because this relationship is, is actually commanded. So, so who's in my circle that, that, I'm, that I'm pouring into? 
they look to you as a resource. You are a mentor or a father figure in their lives. They're, they're constantly pulling on you. Amen. Amen. But it's in a good way. Then the fourth relationship is folks. Say folks. Now, pastor, uh, who are the folks? The, listen, these are people that are very nice. They're very nice. They, 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 they're very kind. Uh, but they don't see you as a change agent in their life. In other words, I like talking to you, like hanging around you, but I can't remember nothing you said. I really, I can't remember, and I don't want to remember nothing you said because I don't view you that way. I'm just folk. And so folk, there, there's some folk relationships they just hanging around, but they ain't growing. They, they ain't trying to, they don't want to grow. They ain't trying to learn because they don't see you that way. And you see yourself different than they see you. And so they just folk. There's some folk. And notice all of them start with an F. They, they just folk. <laughs> see, y'all take took that the wrong way. They, they, they just folks. In John chapter 6, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to give you the script. John chapter 6, verse 24 and 26, there were folks hanging around Jesus. And, and Jesus, Jesus said, y'all ain't coming after me for the right reason. Y'all coming after me uh, for the fish and the load. You ate, and you got full, and you hungry again, so you just coming around to eat. You got some folks that's just hanging around you to eat. Yeah, even if they can get the crumbs, they hanging around to eat. <laughs> they can't wait to get their knees and feet up under the table. <laughs> yeah. There, there are folks, and then number five, there's, there are foes. F-O-E-S. You got, you got the foes. Now, check your foes, circle, because, because these people are very draining. Very draining. You owe out after you've been with them. I mean, you are, you are emotionally spent because these are foes. Now, how you recognize a foe relationship is that they criticize and they complain about everything and about everybody. They're not positive about anything or anybody. And here's the problem. Pastor, why are you bringing this up to me? Because we have these folks in our circle. And see, the first three, God wants you to invest in. The last two, he wants you to decide what you're going to spend. There's a difference in investing and spending. And so what has happened, we've got men who are investing where they should be spending. And, and because you're investing where you should be spending, there's no return. And God is saying, I want you to value the relationships that I have placed in front of you. I need you to invest in the ones you need to invest in. Do you have a father? A father figure. Somebody uh, that's been where you're trying to go. That, 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 that's pouring into you that you're open. I'm just open to receive. I'm not, listen, I'm going to tell you my issues, but I'm not going to tell you what to tell me. I, I just want to receive what you have to say. 
Um, there was a man named Tom Landry. He was a football coach, Dallas Cowboys. Anybody know Tom Landry? Um, there's something uh, in, in football that's called uh, the coaching tree. And a good coach uh, is going to produce other good coaches. They're going to come from the tree. But the coaches have to be willing uh, to sit under this coach for a season before they go out on their own. Because there's something that you've done and that you know that I have not done that I need to know. Now, if you're raising teenagers, they forget that you've been 15. They, they forget that you've been 18. They, they forget that you've been 27. So we play the role as parents. Yeah, yeah, we play the role. Yeah, okay, we don't understand. Yeah, we do. Now, you can either learn by one or two ways. You, you can learn by wisdom or you can learn by experience. Wisdom says the pot is hot. Experience says go ahead and touch it. <laughs> and when you pull back a burnt hand, don't get mad at me because I tried to tell you, but you didn't want to listen. And so great, great coaches produce great, great coaches. Right, right. And so Tom Landry had a coaching tree. Dan Reeves, he had uh, Dan Reeves, he had uh, Dick Nolan, he had uh, who came out of his coaching tree. These guys uh, not only were great coaches, Gene Stallings, he actually recruited me in college. Had a free agent shot to be a Dallas Cowboy, believe it or not. I did. Yeah, he said, I ain't going to draft you. But you can play in my secondary. He said, you that good. And I was so crazy, hard-headed, that I chose to go, some, go into a different field of being a stockbroker rather than being a football player. My sons, they rib me about that every chance they get. I could have been the son of an NFL player. Now I'm just a son of a pastor. And so they, that's a true story. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's true, sir. And so, y'all know Nick Saban? Let's see who came under him. J Jimbo Fisher, Will Muschamp, um, Kirby Smart, okay. Um, Nick Saban has won a championship, a few. Now Kirby Smart is doing the same thing at Georgia. Uh, how is he doing that? He said under father. He, he said under. And, and, and you know what, Lord, Jesus, help us. You know what made Joshua so successful? He said under Moses for how long? Forty years. He never asked to be first in, in, in command. He waited until it was time for him to be promoted. A father will prepare you men for success. We cannot be so proud that we want to do it the quick and the easy way. There is no quick and easy in the kingdom. God doesn't operate that way. And so in the kingdom, you can't cheat the process. And so we have to stop pretending that we got it all together when we don't. And another thing, let me say this, because I, I hear people saying, well, what if they expose it? Listen, a father covers you. A, 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 a father is a covering. And so a father's not going to expose your weaknesses, your vulnerabilities. A father is going to pour into that to help you to overcome it and to be healed from it. 
That's a good father. Come on, somebody. And, and, and so, so, so we need these folk in our circle. Say amen. amen. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise?